Hello everyone, this is João, and today we're going to talk about gel electrophoresis, a very popular and versatile method that it helps separate molecules using a gel and electricity, as the name indicates. Now, the molecules that can be separated using this method are namely proteins and nucleic acids famous molecules of DNA and RNA can be separated using gel electrophoresis. Now a few words on the basic outline of how this method works. So basically what you do is you introduce these molecules into an aqueous solution as you can see here and then inject this aqueous solution into a gel. Afterwards, you will run a electrical current through the gel and this will allow the molecules to separate. Now, the molecules can be separated by three main things that we need to discuss. The first one is by charge. So, as you know, molecules have different charges. And for the fact that we're introducing them into an electrical current, then the molecules will go towards their opposite charges. Now, the second thing is by molecular weight. And as you know, the larger the molecule is, the slower it will travel through the gel. And then the third thing is by diameter or extension. So the bigger the diameter or the bigger uh, the extension of the molecule, the more effort the molecule will make to go through the gel matrix. So these three things are considered or will help separate the molecules. Before I talk about the different types of gel electrophoresis that you can use in a lab, I want to just give you the very basic steps on how to do gel or how to perform a gel electrophoresis in a lab setting so you can have an understanding how this method is used in labs throughout the world. Now, say you're a scientist and you want to study a few molecules, you want to separate them and study their size or their electrical charge or even diameter. The first thing that you would do when you use gel electrophoresis is prepare the gel. And as you can see here, you would prepare it in a liquid form and then pour it into this chamber and allow it to solidify. And this is what we're going to see here. In the next slide is the gel solidifying. Now, important thing to show here is that you would introduce a comb. This is known as a comb. You introduce it to form like a few spots where you can then introduce the solution containing the molecules. And this is how it would actually look after it's solidified and in real life you see the gel in full form, full solid shape with the holes, let's say, or slots where you are going to fill with aqueous solution containing the molecules that you want to separate. Now the next step would then be, let me clear out this part, next step would be to introduce the aqueous solution, as I mentioned before, into the gel. As you can see this gentleman doing it here in this image. And afterwards you would plug or this chamber into an electrical device that allows the introduction of an electrical current into the gel. Now what you see here is the gel with a clear electrical current running through it. And now after waiting for a few minutes you're going to see that the molecules are going to run from one part of the gel to the other. And depending on those three factors that I mentioned, size, molecular weight, and diameter, then you will see the molecules separated into bands, as you can see here on this image. You see different bands, and each band represents 
a molecule that has been separated due to their size or due to their charge, etc., etc. The first type of gel electrophoresis that I would like to discuss is known as agarose gel electrophoresis. And there are a few points that I would like to make on this type of gel electrophoresis. The first one is that the main component of the gel is actually a sugar or a polysaccharide known as agarose. And this is the most commonly used type of gel to separate nucleic acids, or in other words, to separate DNA molecules and also RNA molecules. Now, the third point is that this gel is usually done horizontally. As you can see here on this image, the, Z, the gel is positioned horizontally. The molecules are separated by the number of bases, in other words, by size. And one important point to make is that uh, DNA and RNA are usually negative or they have a negative charge due to the fact that their backbones are full of phosphate molecules, giving them a negative charge. Now for that reason, what's going to happen in this type of gel, the current is going to run from a negative electrode, as you see here, to a positive one, and the molecules are going to then migrate towards the positive electrode, towards uh, due to the fact that they are negative. Now, they're going to be separated by their number of bases or by their size, as I mentioned, and this means that the larger molecules are going to travel slower, so they migrate slower, so they're usually left somewhere in this area or are left behind the smaller molecules that are able to travel faster, so they migrate faster and end up usually at the bottom of the gel. Now an important point to make also is that ethidium bromide is added or used as a stain because then after the gel is completed or the procedure is completed you need to visualize the bends and the way you do so is by using a the, this stain then then allows you to visualize the bends using a UV light. We're still on agarose gel electrophoresis. There are a few things that I need to add. The very first one is that you can see here this electrophoretogram. This image is known as an electrophoretogram. It's a long word that means something very simple. This is the end result of an agarose gel electrophoresis. So once you separate a few molecules using this method, this is what you should see. Now, you need to know a few things so you are able to interpret an electrophoretogram. You need to squeeze some information out of this, this electrophoretogram. And the way you do so is the first thing is that these bright pink shapes that we see here, they're known as bands. And bands will tell the information that you need to know about the molecules that you just separated. And we have here three things that bands will tell you. The very first one is that the number of fractions that differ in size will equal to the number of bands. So say if we have in solution three DNA fragments known as A, B, C, then when we run a gel, we should get three bands. The second thing is that the relative size of a nucleic acid corresponds to the position of the band. So you're able to tell by looking at an electrophoretogram with more information added to this, keep in mind, but you're able to know the amount of base pairs according to the position of the band. Remember that the bands that migrate further down have less base pairs because they're smaller, 
and the ones that are left behind because they migrate slower, then they have more base pairs. The third thing that bands are able to tell you is that the relative amount related to the width of the band. So the width of the band can tell you how much or an approximate amount of the molecule that is present in that band or that corresponds to that band. So as you can see here, this band is thicker than this one here. So you could assume that this one here has less amount of this particular molecule and this one here has more of this particular molecule right here. So these are the three things that bands can inform you. Now the last thing that I would like to add doesn't have anything to do now with the interpretation of electrophoretogram, but one thing that you need to know about agarose gel electrophoresis is that every time you want to separate RNA molecules you need to use formaldehyde. And why is that? Because RNA molecules have a lot of these structures in them known as self-loops. And for this reason the, you need to use formaldehyde so you're able to break the bonds and denature the self loops. So you're going to denature and that way you can run the gel properly as you do with DNA. We're going to move on to a different type of gel electrophoresis known as polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis, also known as PAGE. Now there are a few features that are important to mention about this method. The very first one is that the gel is comprised of polymers of acrylamide and bisacrylamide. And also the second point is that if you remember well from agarose gel electrophoresis, where you place the gel horizontally and run it in this manner, now on this method, the chamber, as you can see in this image, will allow you to separate the, the molecules vertically, as you can see here. The third and last point that I want to make here on this slide is that the pore size of the gel can be regulated and defined by concentration. And you can do that once you define the protocol that you want to use for a specific type of molecules that you want to separate. We are still on polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis because I need to add a very commonly used method or subtype of page known as SDS page. SDS page is used to separate the very important molecules known as proteins and one important and key chemical that is going to be used and hence the SDS this stands for sodium dodecyl sulfate and also we're going to introduce a mercaptoethanol two important chemicals that will facilitate separation of proteins in these conditions now the first thing that you need to know about SDS is that it will bind to hydrophobic amino acids making proteins negative or giving proteins a clear negative charge that way they can easily migrate towards a positive charge in the electrophoretic current. The second point or second thing that SDS will allow us to do is that it will destroy the secondary structure bonds that you find in proteins such as the alpha helices and the beta sheets. And the third point is that it will allow polypeptide chain dissociation from other molecules that might be around. 
Now what Mercato ethanol does, it will simply destroy the disulfide bonds that might exist between some of the amino acids in the proteins that we're trying to separate. Now finally, I want to add one point here on SDS page is that we usually use this stain here to be able to visualize the bands and this is CCB, an abbreviation for Quomacy Brilliant Blue. Hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, but this is CCB.